Good morning. Another nice early start. And I was just noticing the sun is just starting to come up right now. And I think it's going to be a nice sunrise. I'm going to maybe uh, attach it at the end of today's episode. That way I can take my time and if it's really, really nice, I'll add music to it. <laughs> yeah, that, that looks really good. It's just happening right now. Just a coincidence. I didn't time it that way. Um, I did come back to the model table last night. I spent quite a bit of time here. And uh, in order to see how we got to this place, let's roll back. Okay, we have finished the crane, step seven, except for the painting, of course. Step eight. And when I first glanced at this a few minutes ago, I thought, oh, the whole thing's photo etched, but I'm realizing that this, this here is plastic, probably uh, high definition plastic, if you want to call it that. But there is a couple of photo etch pieces on the D sheet that we were looking at yesterday, uh, just a coincidence, and uh, or I mean in, in the last episode, and it's these right here. Um, yeah, this should be fairly easy. They're just straight bands. I don't know if I'm going to be wanting to solder the, the this together or not. I might. We'll see how it, what it looks like after I bend it together. It might be a little stronger if it's soldered. Anyway, these there's there's two sheets like this, by the way, and uh, so we have to make two pieces: this one and this one. Now, I was looking at this earlier, and and this this is kind of confusing. I'm going to have to really pay attention here, or hopefully, when we get these pieces, the L17s and what have you, um, you know, it'll be pretty obvious where some of this stuff goes when we get this piece assembled. So uh, it looks like we need L20, uh, L23, E23. Okay, so we need the E sheet, the L sheet, um, or maybe I should say sprue, E10. Okay, let's let's get our uh, our Ls and our Es. Okay, parts 20 and parts 39. A pretty good size, and uh, the the there's probably subtle differences in them. So I've made up tins to keep them separate, but uh, most of the other pieces, I, I think we'll be able to sort of tell just by looking at them. Okay, thirty nine. and 20. Okay, now these other pieces here we need 16 and 17. Okay, they they are so much different from each other that there's no way we're going to get them mixed up so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, I guess it doesn't matter which tin we put it in. Now we need Oh, we need some stuff off the uh, F sprue as well as the E sprue. Oh, we'll get that later. Okay, is there any other L pieces that we need? Yes, we need an L, L8, L26, L9. Um, well, this 8 and 8 and 9 look a lot different. Well, let's get the L21. That's different. We won't get that mixed up. And there it is right there. All right. Well, let's uh, just recompose here a little bit. Maybe I should get tins out for, let's find these L8 and L9, where are they? Oh, here they are up here. Oh, you know what? They're just, they're, they're the same thing. They're just mirror image to each other. Um, I better get separate tins just in case. Got lots of tuna fish tins. Now here again, we do not want to be cutting off the 
positioning pin. So let's go right up close to the sprue. Okay, so that's number nine. And that's number eight. Okay, we need L26, which is this one. And I don't know if you can see it or not, probably you're too far back, but the, the, uh, the drawing that the illustrator, not the artist, the illustrator drew doesn't look anything like this. So we're just going to have to guess how it's supposed to go. Okay, anything else on the L sprue? Yes, there is. L31. Okay, here we go with the E sprue. And uh, we need E10 and E23, and they're pretty obvious here. There's the 23. They're so different in length, I don't think we need to worry about having to make separate tins. Okay, there we go. I'm pretty sure that's it for the E sprue. Now we need the F sprue. We need eight F11s. Four on one side and four on the other side. This, this is the same part turned around. Oh, F33, we've got to get those as well. Okay, there are two F sprues, and there's a 33 on each one. And here again, we're going to want to be careful not to nip in the wrong place. Okay, we need a total of eight F11s. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and get the four off the other sprue the same way. Alright, now we need F18. I think this might be the last F part. F18, that sounds like some kind of a fighter jet, doesn't it? When I was a kid, the buzzword was CF100. I think they had just come out and replaced the Mustang and stuff like that. Um, F18, isn't Steve in the model shed doing an F18? No, he's doing a mosquito bomber. Okay. Now, this is similar to the piece that I lost on the floor. Let's uh, try not to do that this time. Might be kind of hard to get the flashing off of that and keep it looking round. Well, I'll figure it out. Okay. Number 20 here. As near as I can tell, this is going to be the only piece of photo X we're going to need. Now, I've already nipped this one and this one. 
So we just have to get this one. That one. You know, I should have my, my cutter turned the other way. It, it actually would chisel a little bit better. And that one. Now, this, this is the one that I thought we might want to do some soldering on. Now, you can see here, let me just pry it loose. Okay. So, you can see here it's going to be f formed into a sort of a box. <laughs> a long box. But this ladder or or this this bracing is going to have to be folded to go along this one and this one so so that's the only unusual bend otherwise everything is very very straightforward i think i'm going to try soldering it well i'll, I'll know once i get it folded up you know just uh yeah we'll wait till it's till it's folded up and then we'll see that won't be today anyway that's for sure now, I stand corrected here. I said we only need two. Well, I meant we need two, one of each. Uh, fortunately, there are two D sheets, but I'm just going to go ahead and get it same way as I did this first one. A little earlier this afternoon, I thought I'd check and see if I can get into my car a little easier than I could when I tried the other day. If you remember, about 48 hours ago, we had a snow, and uh, well, it wasn't much of a snow. I think we had more of more thawing than we've had uh, accumulation of snow. Anyway. Looks like pretty soon I'll be able to get my door open all the way. Yeah, and walking around the front, I could see that it won't be long. I'll be able to just sort of drive straight out. Well, I will have to drive over something, but at least I won't wreck the air dam in the front of my car trying to get through it. Okay. Things are looking good. Be able to go to the store all by myself pretty soon. <laughs> well, I think what I'm going to do here for the rest of this evening is I'm going to relax and get these little parts cleaned up. And, uh, yeah, it's relaxing. And I won't press record on the camera unless something really important or really interesting happens. So, uh, as near as I can tell right now, if I can hang on to it, is we're going to see you in the morning. All being well. Well, it is morning. And we did have ourselves a bit of a nice sunrise this morning. And I'm planning to put it at the end of today's episode. All being well. As long as everything works out. And uh, I don't forget. Um, anyway. Now on some of these smaller parts. Uh, some of the ones that, were, that are really, really delicate. Um... I probably could have done a little bit, what you might say, more sanding on the where the sprue c connections were and so on. Uh, but I was afraid that I might accidentally break them. Oh, and if you remember this one and, and this one here, uh, we had numbered them so we wouldn't get them mixed up. However, now that I know what they are and where they go... Um, I, I don't think I'll have a problem because there's 
basically only one way they can go for them to fit properly onto the other part, uh, which I believe is this thing right here. When it's turned over, we can see that there are uh, little holes on it that, that the uh, pegs have to mount in. Anyway, we'll, we'll come to that probably today, all being well. Also today, I'm going to fold these. In fact, maybe what we'll do is that'll be the first thing we'll do. Let, let's let's fold these pieces of photo etch. And oh, by the way, this whole contraption here, and as near as I can tell, this is all the parts. Uh, I haven't missed anything. Is uh, for the catapult that's going to go on top of one of the turrets, and uh, you have to poke at it, don't you? You have to poke at it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's going to go on one of the turrets, and the airplane's going to mount on top of that, on top of this. Um, it could well be that a lot of our detail is going to be hidden by the wings of the aircraft and so on, and we're and we're not going to see it anyway. Uh, okay, let's uh, recompose here. We'll uh, get Andy's photo etch bender going, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, bend these into shape and see if we can make them look like something. Okay, well that was good. I didn't fumble this and now I don't need to do a retake. Um, now, normally I like to fold towards the folding line, which in this case would be folding, folding it up this way. However, it appears that the detailing is, uh, is, on, is on this side. So if we turn it over, and if we were to fold it so that the detailing was out, then we would be folding away from the folding lines. Now, it probably wouldn't make a, a huge difference. Um, let's just stick the macro lens on, and, and, and it could be that we're not going to be able to see the detailing anyway, but it the, these pieces here are kind of embossed a little bit. Now, granted, once they're painted, in all likelihood, the paint is going to fill up the little pores in the in this uh, detailing. Um, let's get the macro lens on and have a nice close look here. Okay, now you can see this uh, detailing that they've done here, sort of an embossing sort of thing. In other words, right here it's 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 not embossed, whereas here it is. Um, so in order to have this on the outside where it can be seen, we have to flip this thing over and bend it the other way. Otherwise it's going to be on the inside. Now, once again, it, it's probably not, not a big deal. Okay, it's not a big deal. But uh, let's just uh, see what we can do here. Sorry about my big ugly finger. Now this should be extremely easy to bend, being as that the uh, there's, there's just uh, what two, four, six connection points, and they're very very narrow. So it's not like we have to bend a, a solid a solid piece that has has been uh, that that has been. Uh, formed with, with uh, folding lines. In other words, I'm putting very, very little, very little pressure on this to, to bend it up. And, uh, and it's, and, whoops. And it should be bending pretty much where it's supposed to. Maybe I got it stuck in the, under the nose too much there, because it doesn't want to go all the way up. It was starting to get a little bit, a little bit stiff. So if you if you have it stuck underneath the bend the uh, breaker bar too far, 
then what happens is that the the back of the piece that you're bending up comes up against the nose of the breaker bar and uh and it binds yeah, okay so we got that one now it's going to get a little bit difficult here because Okay, we if we bend this this one now, then we have to we then we have to do this final line that I'm touching right now, probably uh, probably with the photo etch bender, with uh, with the uh, I mean with the uh, Tamiya bending plier. Okay, I'll crank it down here. Now we're going to go up. That feels pretty good. It didn't feel it binding, so I had it right this time. Now we got to make the, this final bend right here. And uh, this is where a, a photo etch bender like this is doesn't doesn't work too good because I can't figure out how I could put it in and have the breaker bar right there where I'm touching right now. Uh, you'd have to have a, a special a special made breaker bar, I guess. But anyway, let's let's get uh, you know, I could I, I could use my other tweezers too. They, they they might work. I think the photo etch where where's the uh, Tamiya bender here? Okay. Um the the Tamiya bender is going to be I think slightly too let's let's just see if I can get it on there and then get back back in the field of view okay it is going to just make it it's going to just make it here now my, oops it slipped Okay, I, w I was noticing, at first I had it like this, but it seems that the, uh, that the Tamiya Bender widens out as it goes up. And I, I'm going to have to, uh, oh I'm sorry, I, I realize I'm uh, getting it out of your field of view here and I'm talking and you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, oh come on Ron. Okay, if I squeeze hard, it shouldn't slip. Okay. Um, I basically only get one shot at this. Let me recompose. Okay, once again, I only get one shot at this. So I'm just going to turn this around so that you can see what's going on here. And uh, I'm probably, you know, in all likelihood here, I may not be able to fold it over all the way. It look like it's going, if I push a couple of areas at the same time. Now it's okay. It's it's kind of together there. Sometimes when I put my thing my finger in your field of view like this, it's also to give perspective. Because I, I do realize from, from comments that I quite often receive, people have no idea how small this stuff is. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I, anyway, I think, I think we basically got it here, don't we? It, it looks like it to me. Okay, let's, let's see now if I can... See, right now I've got an elastic band going around the 
the handle on the on the plier. So I'm going to try and hold it shut with my finger and take the elastic band off. Okay, now I should be able to open this up and will this slide out? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be all right. Okay, I think we basically got it here. And it's uh, folded in such a way that the uh, detailed is detailing is out. I think that's going to be all right. Now, I'm just going to have to tweak this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to have to put on my magnification hood, which I should actually be wearing right now, but I'm not. And uh, and just bend bend this over so that the edge that has to be soldered. Well, it's almost together now, isn't it? No, it's not. Here, here it is, right here. Okay, so so this has to be pressed down so that it's. Yeah, I, th I think I should be able to do that, and then we'll just run a little bit of flux along the edge there and apply some heat and uh, voila we're done it's easy to say isn't it last night at the model table i had just finished up cleaning off the sprue and what have you off of all these little parts that we've got here now and uh, i was just sort of staring at the screen not really looking at anything and then I noticed that uh, our little friend Missy came out for her nightly tinkle. And uh, I sort of kept an eye on her a little bit, and I was wondering, is she going to go into the rabbit pellets? Uh, now, the reason I've got rabbit pellets out instead of uh, uh, carrots is because we ran out of carrots. And um, actually, today is grocery day. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be contending with that. But, you know, I've got good news and bad news. Well, it's grocery day. That's the good news. The bad news is I forgot to order carrots again. So our little rabbit friends, they're going to have to be eating the pellets. Um, now, uh, I noticed that the uh, rabbits do not seem to be liking the pellets as much as the carrots. Well, they, they, they've been spoiled, I guess. Um, and the uh, pellets, they're, they're a lot like dog food. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Missy's going to be sticking her nose in them, I guess. I don't know what we can do about that. And uh, also another little creature seems to be liking them. <laughs> anyway, that's sort of the update for the rabbits. Uh, there does not seem to be as many this spring, uh, if you could call this spring. It sure doesn't look like it lately, but uh, uh, yeah, it's spring right now here in Winnipeg. I think all of a sudden we're going to get a warm spell and all this snow is going to go. Anyway, let's uh, mosey on here and uh, get back to the model table. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, I suppose in a way this is a good thing, but I'm finding that I'm allowing the model table to almost become an obsession and um, it, it, it occupies almost most of my waking time uh, and I guess that's sort of a good thing it, it, it could be that I am preoccupied with something that I shouldn't be doing anyway uh, like eating <laughs> okay that's another story isn't it Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here this morning. Like, I know it's only 10.30. But I'm, I, I will come at this later this afternoon. And uh, I do plan on trying to solder our little part here. At least that's the plan. But as I mentioned earlier, to, today is grocery day. Uh, you know, and uh, there are other things that I, that I want to do that I should be doing. Um, and uh, there's things that I should be doing that I'm not going to do. <laughs> and anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, we're, we're going to call it quits here for today and uh, go at this again this afternoon. I, oh, and I want to do the sunrise. I've got about an hour of it that I'm going to condense down into about a minute, so it'll be a time lapse. That takes a little bit of time. And I enjoy doing that. Um, uh, anyway, uh, Thanks for watching everybody.
and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.